Hi everyone, I hope you are doing well today. In this video, I'm going to show you how to jailbreak your PS5 running firmware version 5.50 or lower. I'll walk you through the entire process, starting from the jailbreak itself, installing a web browser, game manager application, and finally, how to play backup games for both PS5 and PS4. Make sure to follow each step carefully so you can get everything set up properly. Now, let's get started. Okay, as I mentioned at the beginning, at the time this video was made, the PS5 models that can be fully jailbroken are those running firmware version 5.50 or lower. What I mean by a full jailbreak is that, besides being able to install and run homebrew applications, the PS5 can also play backup games for both PS5 and PS4. So, this is not just about enabling the debug settings menu. The current status of the PS5 jailbreak based on firmware versions can be found on PS5 scene forms, so I won't be covering that here to keep this video concise. Instead, I'll focus entirely on the tutorial, as I mentioned at the beginning. Before we move on to the steps, let me first show you the PS5 home screen before the jailbreak. As you can see, there are no installed games or applications, even web browser like PS4, except for the default PS5 apps and system software. Next, let's check the firmware version of my PS5. To do this, go to Settings, then System, and select Console Information. Here, you can see my PS5 firmware version, which is 5.50. If you're unsure how to find your PS5 firmware version, it's the four digits that appear after the first four numbers, as I've highlighted here. For reference, this is a PlayStation 5 that I purchased in October 2023. Since then, I haven't used it at all because I specifically kept it aside, waiting for a jailbreak to become available. Finally, just two days before making this video, a full jailbreak for this firmware version was released. Before proceeding with the jailbreak process, we first need to download the necessary files and applications. The first file we need is kstuff.elfpayload for firmware 5.50 which matches my PS5 firmware version. This payload is essential for running homebrew applications and backup games. Even though we can enable the debug settings menu and install homebrew apps and games, without the KStuff payload, these applications won't run. Next, we need a payload injector that will allow us to send the stuff payload from a computer to the PS5. There are several options available, such as PS SoCat, created by Master. You can use this, and I've included the download link in the description. However, in this video, I will be using my own application, PS5ELF Injector, which serves the same purpose. As additional information for PS5 firmware 4.51 or lower, you don't need to inject the stuff payload like this because it is already included in the exploit host. Therefore, it is possible that future firmware versions, such as firmware 5 and above, may also include it. We also need to download homebrew applications that we will install on the PS5. The first is a web browser. As we saw earlier, the PS5 does not include a built-in web browser. This browser will be useful for accessing exploit hosts more conveniently. The second application is Itemsflow, which functions as a game manager. We need this application to be able to run backup games on the PS5. I have downloaded everything. Now, for the homebrew applications, specifically the internet browser and Itemsflow, we need to copy them to a USB flash drive since we will be installing them on the PS5. First, insert the flash drive into your computer and make sure it is formatted to XFAT. If it's already formatted, we can proceed with copying the files. Now, I'll copy the homebrew applications to the flash drive. Once the copying process is complete, eject the flash drive safely from the computer. Now, let's move on to the jailbreak process. The first step is to connect the PS5 to the internet. However, before doing that, we need to disable the automatic download and installation of system updates to prevent the PS5 from updating its firmware when connected to the internet. To disable this, stay in the System Software menu, then select System Software Update and Settings. Here, turn off these two options. Download update files automatically and install update files automatically. Once that's done, we can now connect the PS5 to the internet. Go back to Settings, select Network, then go to Settings again and enable Connect to the internet. Next, choose Setup Internet Connection. 
If you're using Wi-Fi, select your SSID and enter the password if required. Now, the PS5 is connected to the internet. At this point, you have the option to add Nomadic DNS, which helps block the PS5 from connecting to Sony servers, preventing automatic firmware updates. To set up a custom DNS, highlight your connected Wi-Fi network, press the Options button on your controller, and select Advanced Settings. Then, go to DNS Settings, change it to Manual, and enter the primary DNS with the Nomadic DNS IP address. However, I should mention that this DNS does not work on certain internet service provider, including mine. That's why I'm not using it here. But if you want to try it, feel free to do so. Next, we need to access the exploit host to perform the jailbreak. Since the PS5 does not have a built-in internet browser, we will access the exploit host through the user guide menu. But this is only necessary for the first time. Once the jailbreak is successful, we can install the internet browser from the flash drive, making future access much easier. To access the exploit host through the user guide menu, follow these steps. In the settings menu, go to user guide, health and safety, and other info. Select user guide and scroll down to playstation.com help. Wait for the page to fully load, then select PS Store and Refunds. Once the page loads, select Purchase and PS Store. Scroll down slightly, select the first drop-down menu, and choose PlayStation Store. After the new page appears, scroll to the bottom and select YouTube. Click Sign In in the top right corner. Select Privacy, then Overview in the top left corner. Scroll down and select Google. Now, we are on the Google homepage, where we can enter any website URL, including the exploit host page. Type the search query as shown here, and select the top result, which is an exploit host page. On the exploit host page, you will see several available options. You can choose any exploit host that works best for your PS5. However, in my case, the exploit hosts listed here are not ideal, so I will use a different one. To access another exploit host, simply type its URL in the search bar at the top Then press Go or R2 to load the page. If you see a retrying message repeatedly, don't worry. Just wait until the jailbreak process either succeeds or fails with a kernel panic. Here, my PS5 experienced a kernel panic, meaning the jailbreak attempt failed. In this case, we need to restart the process by reopening the exploit host page from the user guide menu, as we did before. For the sake of time, I won't show this part again. Now, let's wait and see if the second jailbreak attempt is successful. A small tip, if you experience repeated failures or kernel panics more than five times, try performing the jailbreak on a new user profile or a different user account. It looks like the jailbreak was successful, indicated by multiple repeated notifications. Wait until all notifications disappear, then press OK as instructed on the screen. The next step is to inject the Keystuff payload from the computer to the PS5. First, make sure that both the computer and PS5 are connected to the same network. On the PS5, note down the IP address and port number displayed on the screen. These are needed for the payload injector application. Open your chosen payload injector application. Here, I've already launched mine. Feel free to use any injector app of your choice. Enter the PS5's IP address and port number into the payload injector. Select the payload file to inject. In this case, choose kstuff.l. Click inject and wait for the process to complete. 
If the injection is successful, you will see a notification saying, K-Stuff successfully loaded. This confirms that the PlayStation 5 is now fully jailbroken. Next, we will install the required homebrew applications, specifically the internet browser and game manager items flow. To do this, plug in the flash drive where we previously copied these applications. Now go to the settings menu, scroll all the way down, and select debug settings. Then choose package installer. Here, you will see the two PKG files that we copied to the flash drive earlier. Select each file one by one to start the installation process. Once the installation is complete, go back to the PS5 home screen to check the installed applications. The internet browser will appear under the media tab. As you can see, a new internet browser icon has been added. Let's launch the application to check if it works. This is the browser interface, and you can see that the history and previously accessed exploit host URLs are already saved. Now, running an exploit is as simple as clicking on one of these saved links. If you want to open a different exploit host, you can type the URL directly into the address bar. With this, you no longer have to go through multiple menus in the user guide just to access Google search or an exploit host page. The items flow application can be found under the games tab. Let's open it now. If you see an update prompt, make sure to select update later. Do not choose update now, as this will trigger a PS5 firmware update, which could break the jailbreak. Technically, you can disable the PS5's internet connection, but for the first launch of items flow, an internet connection is required. After that, you can disconnect the PS5 from the internet. This is the items flow home screen. To run backup PS5 games, you must launch them through this application. Now, let's move to the next step, which is running backup PS5 and PS4 games. For this, we need to switch back to the computer. Let me explain the backup game formats first. For PS4 backup games, the process on PS5 is identical to PS4. You copy the PKG file to an external hard drive, install it via debug settings, then package installer, and once installed, you can run the game just like any other homebrew application. For PlayStation 5 backup games, the process is different. Currently, PS5 backup games are in folder format, not in PKG format like PS4 games, to run them. Scan the backup game using items flow so it can detect and launch the game. I'll show you how to do this shortly. You can use a regular external hard drive to store the backup game, but this will reduce game performance when playing. Using an SSD is highly recommended for better speed and stability. The higher the transfer speed, the better the performance. Technically, you can store backup games on the PS5's internal SSD, but most PS5 backup games work best when run from an external storage device. I have already copied the PS5 backup game folders and PS4 backup PKG files to my external hard drive since I don't have an SSD available yet. Before proceeding, make sure your hard drive or SSD is formatted to XFAT. Now, let's eject the drive from the computer and connect it to the PS5. First, let's install the PS4 backup game. On your PS5, go to Settings. Scroll to the bottom and select Debug Settings. Choose Package Installer. You should see the PKG files stored on the external hard drive, including the base game and update files. Select each file one by one to start the installation process. Once the installation is complete, go back to the PS5 home screen, then navigate to the Games tab. You should now see the PS4 game icon displayed. Let's try launching the game. Again, if you see an update prompt, make sure to select Update Later. As you can see, the PS4 game runs smoothly on the jailbroken PS5. Now, let's exit the PS4 game and proceed to running a PS5 backup game. First, open the Items Flow application on your PS5. If a prompt appears asking for an update, make sure to select Update Later to avoid any system updates. Once inside the application, select the Cover PS5 app menu and then choose the option to scan for apps. 
This process will allow Items Flow to detect any PS5 backup games stored on either the internal SSD or an external storage device. Wait until the scanning process is complete. When a confirmation prompt appears, select Yes and then click OK. After completing the scan, return to the Items Flow home screen. At this point, you should see a newly added game cover, indicating that the PS5 backup game has been successfully detected from the external SSD or hard drive. To launch the game, select the detected game cover and choose the launch option. In some cases, an error message may appear, but this can be ignored as it does not affect the game. Select OK, and we will return to the PS5 home screen, where you should now see the game icon displayed. Now, let's test the game to ensure it is running properly. As shown here, the PS5 backup game is successfully running on the jailbroken PS5 without any issues. That's all for this tutorial on how to fully jailbreak your PS5, install a homebrew internet browser, game manager, and run backup games for both PS4 and PS5. Hopefully this guide has helped you understand each step clearly. If you encounter any issues during the process, feel free to leave a comment, and I'll do my best to assist you. If you found this video useful, don't forget to hit the like button, share it with others who might need it, and subscribe to this channel for more tutorials and updates on console modding. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.